So, are you excited about what we have here today? I'm actually excited. Really? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Well, what do we have here today? Well, we have the new unboxing video of the new Pioneer AVHX 391 VHS. So, stay tuned. It's finally here. A 2017 AVH product has arrived. This is the, as we said, the X391 BHS. BHS stands for Bluetooth, HD radio, and Sirius XM. Correct. The X is what's going to denote the differences this year. So if you don't have an X, there's some features you're not going to get. This has an X, you're going to get all the cool features. Let's unbox it and start seeing what those cool features are, shall we? Okay. Awesome. Hurry, hurry, hurry. <laughs> what do we have? We have the Bluetooth microphone. Yes, we do. The remote control. Yep. USB extension. This is a five foot USB extension. A lot of you guys ask, where's the USB? How do I get to the USB? The USB is located on the back of the radio, which we're gonna show you in a minute. If you didn't get this five foot extension with your radio, you did something wrong. If you had your radio installed and they didn't run one of these, it came with it. So go back and find out where they put it. Not in the toolbox. All right, so we have bag of screws. Bag of screws, the power plug. That's important. This is the same power plug that they ran last year. So if you have an older radio, back two years, I believe. Two years? Yeah. About two years? Yeah. It'll still plug in. Yeah. The warranty panel. Warranty and thing. the warranty card. There we go. All right, so we're going to go ahead and unbox this and show you the back of the radio. So starting in the corner, we have the rear view camera input. It's a brown RCA. Below it, we have the five volt, one amp USB input. We have the AV inputs located here in an L pattern. The AV inputs can be used for inputs as well as a front facing camera. You just plug into the first yellow RCA input here. Next to it, we have the AV output. Then we have the six channel four volt preamp output starting with front, rear, and sub. This guy here is for the add-on Pioneer navigation system. So if you'd like to add the navigation to your system, this is the AVIC U280 add-on navigation system that plugs into the back of your AVH radio that has an X in it. On this side of the radio, we have the power plug input, we have the auxiliary input, and we have the HD FM antenna input. Above it, we have the Sirius XM input. And if you want a Sirius XM, you need this guy here. This is the SXV300 add-on Sirius XM tuner. We have the steering wheel control input. And then the small input here is for the Bluetooth microphone. Now, the steering wheel control input as well as the auxiliary input are the same size. So make sure when you're plugging them in, you plug them into the right input. So when the unit first powers up, it asks you to choose a language. English, Spanish, Portuguese, French, or this one. We'll pick English for right now and select Next. Next it's going to take you to Network or Standard Mode. Now this has to do with the sound of the radio, uh, meaning are you going to be hooking it up to a tweeter, mid, and subwoofer, or are you going to be hooking it up as front, rear, and sub? So what we're going to do real quick is take a minute and show you both so you can make a better decision. We'll start with Network Mode and select OK. We'll come back to the phone setup in a minute. So we'll put it on a source. We'll select gears. We'll select audio. Once we're in the audio section, this is where network mode really comes into play. You still have your 13 band graphic equalizer. But when you select balance, there's just balance left, balance right. There's no fader front and rear. Because in network mode, it only has left, right and we'll show you more. You have your mute still, subwoofer on and off, speaker level. Now in speaker level what you're going to see is you have tweeter denoted by this little guy here, mid-range located here, and the same on this side as well as subwoofer. But What you're not seeing is any rear speaker control at all because it doesn't have it. It just has tweeter, mid, and subwoofer. Now when you come into crossover, it's going to act the same way. You have your high pass for your tweeter. Default is 8K. 
However, you can adjust it up or down, as well as change your slope from 6, 12, 18, or 24 dB. Next, you're going to get to your cutoff for the high pass on your mid-range. It works the same way. You can slide it forward, slide it back, and then adjust here for your slope. You're going to have the base blocker portion so it won't play low, so you can limit the low base that the mid-range gets. You can drag it and you can rock it back and forth. And then you run into your subwoofer. So you have subwoofer, a bottom for your mid-range, a top for your mid-range, and a bottom for your tweeter. You still have listening position where you can tell it where you're sitting in the car. And then you have time alignment. So when you turn it on, tell it where you want to sit. You can go ahead and adjust the distance your head is from the tweeter and the mid-range. There again, there is no rear. And also control the distance of the subwoofer. You can still do the auto EQ setup in network mode, as well as safe settings, load settings. You still have bass boost control, so if you have music that doesn't have a lot of bass, you still have that feature. Now what you'll notice grayed out is rear speaker output because it doesn't have them, so that's going to be grayed out. Loudness is also grayed out. Automatic level control is not though, and you still have your three function automatic level control. Automatic level control is good for if you have any form of compressed media that isn't a variety of volumes. You can pick mode one or two and it'll help to level out the volume when going from track to track. One other thing to note that when you're in network mode, the Bluetooth sound comes out of the mid-range and not the tweeters. Also on network mode, your front, that's the white and the gray, are tweeters. The green and purple are mid-range, and then the subwoofer is only available through the RCA. You can also use front RC output as tweeter, and rear RC output as mid-range. Now let's go back and look at standard mode. To do that, we need to reset the radio, which we can get to by selecting Menu, Tools, scrolling down until we see Restore Settings, and hit Restore. The unit's going to reboot back to factory default. Now we've already picked a language, so we can go to the next. So now we'll go ahead and select standard mode. Select OK. We'll skip over the smartphone settings again. Select next. We'll turn on the radio. And we'll go into audio. Here you'll still find your 13 band EQ. Now if you'd like to set your 13 band EQ, whether in network or standard mode, simply tap the screen and then you can drag your finger across the screen to make any curve you want. You can go on an individual frequency and move it up and down. How the EQ is basically set up is over on this side here, these three are going to be uh, bass. If we slide over, way over to this side, these three are going to be treble. And the ones in the middle here are going to be mid-range because they're in the middle. There again, low, high. Now in the EQ, you still have five presets as well as two customs. Now when we select fader, you have fader and balance. This is a big tell on whether or not it's in network mode. A lot of people accidentally will put it in network mode and then they'll be like, I don't get any Bluetooth sound because they didn't hook up their rear speakers. So it happens. Mute level control is still there. You have source level adjust. Source level adjust is a really awesome feature that allows you to adjust each source to the relative FM. So for example, if you're listening to a Bluetooth device and it's quieter than FM because let's say it just doesn't have a good output, simply select and you can move it up or you can move it down. This will make that source louder. Now it'll, it's, you're capable of doing it on each source. Right now we're on Bluetooth audio It'll do it for iPod, Spotify, Pandora, and all those as well. Subwoofer on and off. 
speaker level. Here you can also pick listening position, which you can do in network mode too. And it'll go ahead and add in a generic volume offset for you. You can easily adjust these simply by tapping the arrow keys. Now with crossovers, you have a front crossover that you can simply turn on. And there again is a drag and move, just like network mode. You have 6, 12, 18, and 24 dB per octave slopes, which the slopes have to do with how much frequency you're trying to block out. So for example, at 100 hertz, at 24 dB, with a 200 hertz crossover point, this speaker will never play that sound. If we move it up to a 12 dB, you'll get a little bit of that 100 hertz in your sound. It'll just be at a reduced volume, because this is main volume, this is going down like this. So all these frequencies will just be decreased on this angle here, which is the level. You have subwoofer, works the same way, and of course you have rear. Subwoofer settings just take you to the subwoofer crossover. Listening position is a page dedicated to that one feature we just looked at where you can easily access instead of going through a menu. For right now, we'll select front left. And that'll take us over to time alignment. Unlike network, in standard mode, we do have rear. And it works basically the same way. The distance between your head and this speaker is put in here. You can adjust these. Now you can get this number by using a tape measure and measuring from your head to each one of these. Auto EQ is also available. The reason why Auto EQ is grayed out on network and standard mode is the unit has to be in standby mode in order to use this function. If you're interested in doing the Auto EQ, pick up a CD MC20. You have save settings. You have load settings. If you've taken the time to set up either network or standard mode, you definitely want to go back and do save or load settings, save and load settings. You want to save them for sure, that way if the battery is ever disconnected, you can just hit load setting. You still have bass boost, rear speakers. It's grayed out now because this is just like auto EQ. You have to be in standby in order to turn this on and off. This allows you to switch your rear speakers to subwoofer. Don't ask me why, no one ever does it. And you definitely don't want to do it. Um, you get loudness control in standard mode, three step, of course. And there again, automatic level control. Now we're gonna go ahead and reset the radio simply by pressing the little button here. And this will take us back to the startup page again, minus standard and network mode. As you can see, we have our language and it skips right to smartphone setup. So let's take a look at smartphone setup. This is where you tell it what phone you have, either iPhone, iPod, or other. An iPhone, it gives you two choices, USB or wireless Bluetooth. For USB, you have to plug it in to get features like Pandora and Spotify. If you select wireless Bluetooth, you'll be able to control those over Bluetooth without actually plugging the phone in. On Android, it gives you two options as well, App Radio 1 or USB MTP. This, of course, is the factory default. The problem with this is if you leave it on the factory default and you're not using App Radio 1, you do want to switch it to USB MTP. When it's on App Radio and you try to plug in a thumb drive for, let's say, an update and or changing the background, it won't recognize it. So best is to leave it for USB MTP if you're going to choose other. For this demonstration, we're gonna pick iPod and wireless Bluetooth. Now, if you went ahead and had your radio installed and didn't get the option to do any of those settings, don't worry about it. We'll have companion videos and possibly show you how to do it in this video. So let's get started. Let's talk about the radio a little bit. So it has a CD DVD player right here. It's also got an 800 by 480 clear resistive WVGA touchscreen with LED backlight. You have your volume up and down, mode, which mode a lot of people you ask when they press it, it doesn't do anything. 
Mode is for when you're going to add the add-on AVIC navigation system. Otherwise, mode pretty much doesn't do anything. You have your main menu located here. You have your display, which will also shut the display off. You have track up and track down. So the demo mode just came on. Let's go ahead and shut it off. Tap the screen, then tap gears, tap tools, scroll down to where you see demo mode, tap it, and it'll be off. Real quick, for those of you that want to set up your smartphone because you didn't get that option, it's located right here in input output settings. Simply click on it, smartphone setup, and that's where that's at. Now on the screen itself, you have a couple options. This guy here brings you to your source drop down menu. You can scroll through it. We'll come back to those in a second. You have your clock. Simply touch the clock and it'll take you to the clock. Here you can choose your month, date, year, hour. Now the hour is going to be set in 24 hours. You could choose whether you want it to display in 12 hours or 24 here, but when it's on the screen, it'll automatically default to 12 hours. Obviously you have your settings, you have quick access to the EQ when there's a source on, and you have access to your Bluetooth phone. The eject button located right here, as well as this little pinhole is also the reset button. Let's go ahead and go through the sources. We'll select HD radio. Now when you're in HD radio, you have options for presets located right here. To make a preset, simply just press and hold. To tune, simply press these arrows here. Press and hold, it'll scan. Now over here you'll notice where it says HD and analog. What you're wanting it to say is HD and digital. Once it's done that, this will highlight here where it says HD1. Now if you tap the up button, it'll switch to HD2. This will give you a second channel on your FM. You could also make an HD2 channel a preset the same way by pressing and holding it. And when you go to access it from a standard channel, it's going to come up and say linking. This is just the time it takes for it to switch from analog to digital. So next, we'll select iPod. Now because we're connected over Bluetooth, we don't actually have to plug the phone in. We can control the iPod simply by coming over here, selecting playlists, scrolling through our playlists, then scroll through our songs. Now another feature that's nice on these is the dual phone playback. So this little icon here. So how you get it is this is the standard display that's going to come up and then you select function and it'll bring up this icon. Tap it and now you can choose between the three Bluetooth phones. Now you can have two active phones at once. So we can select this phone. It'll go ahead and switch over and start playing the music on that phone. Now the nice thing about this is this is independent of Bluetooth calling. So we can be listening to one phone and still get phone calls from either phone. But well, we'll get to that in a little bit. Next, select Pandora. And you can control your Pandora channels simply selecting stations. You can thumb up or thumb down. You have Spotify control via the same way. Next, we'll select Bluetooth Audio. And Bluetooth Audio, it's going to have similar controls to the iPod. Most of the time, you'll just get basic track up or down. However, you can select which phone you'd like to listen to. Next is Auxiliary. This is just straight up aux. So if you've had an aux jack plugged in, you can access it here. You also have Source Off which will take you to this main off page, as well as introduced last year, power off. If you'd like to shut off the unit, this will make it dead. Now the difference between source off and power off is source off you can still receive Bluetooth phone calls. Power off you cannot. Hit a button to wake it back up. Let's take a look at Bluetooth calling. 
There's a couple features inside of Bluetooth calling that are quite unique. This guy, for instance, here allows you to switch between the two active phones. You can have two active phones at once that will allow you to take phone calls actively from either one. So no matter which one rings, it'll automatically switch. This is great if you have, let's say, a work phone and a home phone or a his and a her phone or something like that to where you need to have both phones active at one time. Similar to Bluetooth audio, it works the same way. Next is Refresh Phone Book. This will allow you to, if you add any new numbers in, simply select this and it will refresh the phone book here. This is Presets, which we'll get to in a second. You have your phone book that you can scroll through or simply put your finger on the side and scroll down until you find a number. Next, incoming, outgoing, or missed calls. You have three choices right here. Simply by selecting one, it will allow you to see who or what phone call you made and tap on it and call that person back. You also have nine keys, so if you actually know their phone number, you can dial it here. Next is your hands-free calling. When you select this, you can select which phone you'd like to use, and then it'll launch either Siri Eyes Free or Google Voice. When the phone rings, you'll tap the green icon to answer and the red icon to hang up. You can also adjust the volume here. Now let's take a look in the menu and see what other features this radio has. We'll go ahead and select gears. You have tools. So in tools, there's a couple things that you might want to take note of. For example, if you're a person that doesn't like beep, you can turn the beep on and off here. If you scroll down the input output settings, along with smartphone setup is your option for your AV input. Default is off. If you select on it, this is where you're going to turn it into the front facing camera. Next up is camera settings. This is where you turn on and off your backup camera. Default is battery. That's usually where you're going to want it. Demo mode we already covered. System language. So if your system language was wrong, you can go ahead and here and choose your system language. Restore settings. Restore settings is a great feature. What this allows you to do is something like this where we've just done this demo and we've hit all these buttons and we don't know what we've done to the radio. If we select restore settings, this will take the radio back to out of the box settings, meaning the default. This is also useful if you've selected network mode and you can't quite figure out how to get it back to standard mode or vice versa, you're going to select this, it's going to bomb the radio back and give you that option. System information. System information is where you're going to find out what firmware is loaded on your unit. So if there's updates, you could periodically check to see if yours is up to date. Now if you sent in your warranty card, or your registration that is, They'll email you and tell you when there's an update. Next is Art Palette. Art Palette is where we make the unit customized to our what we like. We have a few presets here to choose from, as well as if we drag our finger across, we can add in the animated ones. This right here is for the one custom background you can import on your own over USB. It has to be over USB. You cannot use a smartphone to import your own picture. It needs to be a JPEG, and it's best to do it 800 by 480. Illumination. Illumination allows us to change the colors over here. We have five colors to choose from, as well as we can custom make our own, or just leave it on rainbow where it'll constantly change. Theme. Theme is going to be the color of the background. So we can do red, orange, green, and whitish blue, as well as this purple. We can change the background. Let's scroll over here. And we can see those colors come into play. Theme, okay. And then clock. We can change how we want the clock to look or just shut the clock off altogether. Lastly is the Bluetooth phone. Bluetooth phone is where your connection is, so if you'd like to delete a phone, it would be right here, 
and you simply just press delete and then select yes. It'll go ahead and delete the phone from the system. Now, if for some reason you can't get to this feature, that means that you didn't hook up the light green brake wire, or if you did hook it up to the brake, it's not engaged. You need to turn the car on, pull it, release it, and pull it again. That or tap the green wire to ground, release it, and tap it again. Or just buy a micro bypass. Either way, if you're locked out of this, or it says something silly like it's full, smartphone is full, it's because you didn't hook up the green wire. Now the last feature that Pioneer has in these radios is the app radio live mode. Now we've set this up for Bluetooth, so what we need to do now is go back and change it to USB in order for that to work. So we're going to go gears, tools, input output settings, smartphone setup, and USB. Now we can go ahead and plug in our phone, select the home icon, and tap App Radio Live, then select OK. Your phone will look like this. The first thing to come up is Pioneer's generic phone book thing. Um, if you select here, you can get into other services such as music. If you tap the buttons here, here are some of the music services available to you when you're in App Radio Live. Weather. You can have different weathers up. As well as calendar. So if you'd like to take a look at your calendar, it's also located here. And then, of course, their generic navigation. Now, this isn't a turn-by-turn -turn or anything cool like that. Basically, what it is is it's a, it's a really nice phone book. It allows you to find phone numbers and get directions. It won't actually take you there. For that, you want to go to your phone. And launch this guy. Once Waze is launched, the icon will appear here. And from here, this is your standard Waze. You can move the map around. You can see what's going on. You can search. On the phone, it looks like this. If you'd like to disconnect, you can simply select disconnect. If you hit the search key, it'll take you to where all your searches are. You can go ahead and input a search. It is kind of small, but it is doable. So you do have a nice keypad that will launch. So you can type in and then select. And then it'll do its thing. All right, so that's the new radio. That's yeah. the, 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 the features. I won't say new. Those are the features. Um, now, as usual, we're going to make companion videos for these. So if there's a feature that we didn't go deep enough into for you, be on the lookout for a companion video. It's yes. later in the year. They'll already be out. Just go ahead and search the playlist because um, we try to do videos on everything. If there's a feature that we didn't cover, and it's not in one of those companion videos, or if you just can't find it, ask, and we'll point you to it, or we'll make one for you. Yeah. I love content, you know? You know, five days a week. All the time, non-stop fun and excitement. I gotta stop saying that. All right, guys, bring them home, Fernando. All right, so thank you for watching. You know where you find us, uh, Facebook, here in YouTube, and of course in Instagram. And until they come out with a better platform, those are where we're going to be. We also do a Facebook Live show on Mondays at 6.30 Eastern Standard Time. Be sure to check that out. We answer questions. We give you about 45 minutes of our undivided attention. Hey. It's crazy. And, of course, we will be broadcasting the next day on YouTube. Yes. Yeah, you know, whatever. You All right. Yeah, if you miss out. All right, guys, you have a great night, and we will see you later when? Next time. Bye.